In this video we're going to think about the word power. Power in everyday English has got all sorts of meanings. In physics it has a very specific meaning. Power in physics is a measure of how quickly energy is used. It's not a measure of how much energy you've used so much, but rather how quickly it was used. In other words, how many joules of energy you used every second. Before we go further and look at the equation, let's just really clarify what we mean when we say that energy is being used. Now we know that energy can never actually be fully used up. It is never created or destroyed, it just gets changed from one form to another. So if we're being really precise here, we would say that power is a measure of how quickly energy is not used necessarily, but transferred from one type to another. So you could think of a light bulb, for example. A light bulb uses electrical energy, and that electrical energy is changed into light energy. So how many joules of electrical energy get changed to light energy every second would be a measure of the power of that light bulb. The equation for power, therefore, is this. We say that the power of something is equal to the energy that it has used, or more precisely, the energy that has been transferred, divided by the time it took to do that. So it's how much energy has been transferred or used divided by the time in which it took for that to happen. Energy is measured in units called joules. Time is always in seconds, so remember if the question gives it you in minutes or hours, you must try and convert it first. Which means that the units for power are joules per second. So power is measured in joules per second. However, not many people actually use the joule per second. The, the joule per second has been abbreviated. And what we say now is that one joule per second is equal to a unit that we call a watt. So one J slash S equals one W, capital W there for watts. So the units of power are joules per second, but they're often just called watts. If you're doing a question and you come across this symbol for watts, in your mind I would just change that immediately to joules per second. If we were using symbols for the equation, we would say that power P equals energy divided by time like that. So P equals E over T. Now remember we said in a previous video that energy is the same as work done. It's quite common for people to write the equation like this, where W is referring to the work done, which is of course is the same as energy. It's measured in joules, it's divided by seconds, so the whole equation still works. So don't be confused if you see it written as W over time rather than just energy over time. Let's try a simple question. It says a light bulb uses 120 joules of energy in one minute. What is its power? Well, we're going to start this question by writing out the equation. So we'll write power equals energy, or work, divided by the time taken. The question tells us that the energy was 120 joules. Notice I don't write the units whilst I'm doing the equation. I put the units in at the end. I'll just write 120 for now. 120 divided by the time. Well, the time was one minute. Well, we don't use minutes, remember. We use seconds, so we have to change that to 60 seconds. And that gives us an answer of 120 divided by 60. So that means it was two joules per second. So the power of that light bulb was two joules per second. Joules per second can be abbreviated to watts, so it would normally be written as two watts with a capital W. Now let's try a more sophisticated question. A person pushes a shopping trolley with a force of 20 newtons for five meters. It took them four seconds to do this. What's the power? Well, we always start by writing out the equation and we know that power is going to equal energy divided by time. Now, when I look at the question here, I see we've got a force of 20 newtons. We've got a distance of five meters. We've got a time of four seconds. There's nothing that overtly says energy there, so we have to think a little bit. Well, in this case, 
I think we would use a version of this equation where we say power is equal to work done divided by time taken. Now if you remember from the previous video, we know that work done is going to equal force multiplied by distance. This question does give us a force, it does give us a distance, so we should be able to calculate work done. And then we can use the power equation to find out what the power is. So let's calculate the work done first. The work is the force times the distance, which is 20 newtons, multiplied by 5 meters, which is going to give us 100 joules. We can then apply the power equation, we know is equal to work done over time taken, which is going to equal 100 joules, which is the work done, divided by the time, which was 4 seconds, which is going to give us an answer of 25 joules per second, which we're going to abbreviate to watts. Now let's look at a more sophisticated example. A lift travels a height of 300 meters. Its mass is 400 kilograms, and it takes 10 seconds to complete its journey. So what's the power? Well, let's write the equation. We know that power is going to equal energy divided by time. Now, again, in this question, there's nothing obviously that states energy. We've got a, a height here. We've got a mass. There's nothing that states energy. So I suspect it means we're going to have to use the work done version of the equation, where we say power equals work done over time taken. Now we need to calculate the work done then. The work done is going to be equal to the force multiplied by the distance. Now this is a vertical question, the one we looked at in one of the other videos. So the force we use is the weight. And the weight is going to be the mass, which is 400 kilograms in this case, times 10. So the force here is 400 times 10, which is the weight of the lift, multiplied by the distance, which is 300. So the work done, or the energy used, is going to be, let's simplify this, 4,000 times by 300. So remember, you can use your calculator if you want, or you can just um, do this method where we do 3 times 4 is 12. Then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. So that means we've got five zeros happening here. So we've worked out that the work done was 1,200,000 joules. But the question asked us for the power. So now we can use that power equation. Power equals energy over time or work done over time. Well, we now know that the work done was 1,200,000 joules of energy. So we can then divide that by the time. The time was 10 seconds in this case. Now I've written in the units here, you don't actually have to do that when you're doing the equation yourself. Dividing something by 10 is very easy, we just obviously just get rid of one of the zeros there. So this now becomes four zeros here, instead of five, and that is joules per second. So the answer is 120,000 joules per second is the power. But again, a lot of people use watts for this, so we would say it's 120,000 watts. And that's pretty much all there is to power. Just remember, power is always equal to the energy that was used divided by the time that it was used in. Energy we know is equal to work done, so sometimes people write the equation as work done divided by time. And it depends on the question you're doing, whether you want to use this version of work done or whether you want to use this version of energy. Ultimately, they're both the same thing anyway. The units, of course, we've got joules here, we've got seconds here, which means that power is always going to be measured in joules per second, but joules per second are often abbreviated to another unit called watts.